absolutely magnificent. <sighs> if it's as good as this, you'll be doing well. I'm not a great fan of the traditional frittata, which is served normally cold and cooked right through. I find it a bit rubbery. I know the Spanish love it and all that, but it just doesn't do it for me. But last time I was in Spain, I had one which was sort of halfway between a frittata and a scrambled eggs, and it was served hot, and it was beautiful. And that's what I'm going to do today. It had some asparagus, had some parmesan. Now, with the asparagus part of it, first of all, there's two ways you can do it. You can do it like this. If you bend it, it will break where the woody part is. So that's the wood, and this will be the tender bit. But you do end up with quite a small asparagus spear. The other alternative, which is what I'm going to do today, is just cut it evenly about down there. And yes, you've got some of the woody part. So the way to get that to the stage where it's more tender is we just peel it. Maybe not as heavily as that. I started off really well, didn't I? <laughs> Gave it a really good whack. Peel it lightly, Ian. That's the idea. And that will negate that woody part. You can't do it for the whole lot because it gets, it gets tougher as you go along. Now, we're just doing a few spears here, so... Because I'm, I'm only making a frittata for one. But you can make a larger one and put it in the centre of the table, or you can as I'm doing, make individual ones. It's up to you. I think the large one in the centre of the table is most will be easier. All righty. Let's just get rid of that. So we throw that into a big pot of boiling water, which is absolutely essential. Lots of water and salt it pretty well. The reason lots of water, because you want it to come straight back to the boil, and by coming straight back to the boil, it will preserve all the greenness, like any green vegetables, but it preserves all the flavour and the taste. Look, remember your mum used to put the veggies always in a little pot and put it onto the stove at about the same time as the roast went in? But <laughs> oh, I'm being nasty now, <laughs> but she did. And um, when the vegetables were finished, the water was bright green. Well, that was all the goodness from from the green vegetable, wasn't it? It was all in the water. So that's why you put it there, into a big pot of boiling water, bring it back to the boil, don't overcrowd it, and you will find that all the goodness and colour is preserved in there. Now, the frittata itself, four large eggs, good slurp of cream, some salt and pepper, And we just whisk that up. Just with a fork. You just want it mixed together. Just like that. Then we grab a good dollop of butter, put that in a non-stick pan, and put it over the heat. And the second the butter has melted, you then put your eggs in. So you don't want the butter brown at all. Right, in the similar fashion, the scrambled eggs, what we do, when we pull in the sides. And this is to form the soft curds. Just look there, Brendan, that's a curd. That's what you're trying to do. You're forming those soft curds, so by bringing it in from the sides, as it sets, you keep it nice and fluffy and undercooked a bit. Because, as I said, I don't want the typical frittata which you'd put over low heat and put a lid on. I'm not after that. I'm after this to be soft and fluffy and just set. And now what I will do 
is I'll turn that right down. And we'll put the lid on it. And we'll have a look at our asparagus and see how that's coming along. Now, the easiest way to test your asparagus, because you want it crisp tender, is just to get a small, sharp knife like that. And that is perfect. See, it took hardly any time. And it'll be beautiful. It's got its colour. See, there's no colour. Just have a look here, man. There's no colour in that water whatsoever. So all the goodness is in the asparagus. All righty. Now, let's just have a look. Yeah, that's looking good. See, that's starting to get set on the bottom. So we're not far off that at all. And then we're just going to put the asparagus, and I've got some freshly grated parmesan here, which I'll also sprinkle over the top. Now, you can do shavings of parmesan if you like. I actually like it grated, I must admit, because you end up with more of it in each bite of your frittata and asparagus. But that's just me. All right. Now, so that our asparagus doesn't get cold just while we're doing this. What we now do is just whack it on the top. Put the lid back on. Take long until it's nearly ready. Nearly ready. Now you can serve it in the pan, which is nice, isn't it? Yeah, you can serve it in the pan or you can serve it on a plate. It is up to you. But that's all there is to it. A few more seconds. We're in business. Fluffy frittata crisp, tender asparagus, and of course, some really good parmesan, just as the crowning glory. Now, I don't often cook with wild rice, I have to be honest. I now know why, because it's taken quite a long time to cook, and I'm told it's still supposed to have a bite. So what I've done in there, I've got 600 mils of chicken stock, and I've got 200 grams of brown rice and 100 grams of wild rice. It's a lovely mix. Actually, a friend of mine made a, a reasonably similar dish for me just recently, and I liked it so much that I actually asked her for the recipe. She didn't give it to me. <laughs> she said, it's my secret. You can find out. Anyway, I've changed it completely. It's, it's absolutely nothing like hers, but I like the idea of the wild rice and the brown rice together. Now, just one little thing which I did read, and I started to mention this, and I think I digressed. The wild rice always has a little bit of bite to it, so don't worry if you think... I mean, you don't want it raw, but it does have a bit of bite to it. All right, first of all, for the salad, and it's sort of a salad, I suppose, we're just going to make a nice dressing. Just olive oil and some lemon juice and a bit of lemon zest. Parmesan, a couple of nice things like that. So some zest first, and then we'll put the juice of the lemon in as well. And as I said, the juice of the lemon We will taste it, and if we feel we need a bit more olive oil, so be it. Well, it depends how juicy the lemon is, doesn't it? And we'll put some parmesan in there as well. Freshly grated. So don't put any salt in the dressing, because the parmesan, once grated, can be reasonably salty. Bit of pepper, though. And then we will just whisk that up. Nice thick dressing. Parmesan just gives it that little bit of zing. And I'll just have a little taste. A little bit more olive oil. It's a bit lemony. And we'll also just taste the wild. And the, and the brown rice. Mm, it's good. Let's just grab our plate.
Now, don't worry about the fact that the rice is hot and the other things aren't. It's, it's really quite nice. It sort of makes it a, a warm salad, doesn't it? A warmish salad as opposed to a warm salad. So we're just going to put a bed of that. And what we're going to do is fix that a bit. And I'm just going to dress that a little bit because what will happen is that hot rice will take up this dressing beautifully. We're going to put some dressing over the top so you don't have to worry about dressing that perfectly. And what I've got next is I've got some green beans which I've just blanched. Some cherry tomatoes, which we've just cut in half. So we're sort of building layers here. So every bite that you get will have a, a different flavour. Well, hopefully. And then I've got this nice smoked trout. I really like smoked trout these days. I didn't like it much in the early days because it always tasted a bit muddy. But I think it's an underrated thing these days. I don't think we use it as much as we should. And I'm just going to then put... I want every layer dressed reasonably well, so the easiest way to do it is just do it like that. And I'll just grab a chucks just to wipe up my hands. We've also got some lovely fresh mango, which we'll just slice. Take that bit off and I'll push that together because I still want to see that trout poking out, don't I? Sorry. Just let's tear some coriander. This is fairly optional, the coriander. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I just like some fresh herb to go with that. And then last but not least, more of that parmesan, lemon and olive oil dressing. And be fairly generous with it. And just before I go, can I just say one thing? Agnes, this is 10 times as good as your salad, so... No, I won't make rude things. I was going to make a rude thing. So, so much for you not giving me the recipe. This one is far better. Actually, I don't know whether it is or not. But anyway, nice summery feel. Any time of the year it would but it really would. And the wild and the, and the brown rice at the basis of it just gives that little bit of crunch, which just adds a different texture. And it's warm too, which is interesting. started my love affair with food james martin is going back to his first love friends this is what i remember magical times sharing his passion and memories you'll just want to hop on a plane and go with him bon appetit just don't try and match him drink for drink if you think i'm cooking with a glass of this you're having a laugh new series james martin's french adventure starts monday 9 30 on lifestyle food debt <laughs> gone stress Gone. Hassles. Gone. Too much debt? Beyond Debt has helped thousands of Australians with debt problems. You do have options. If you have debts of $8,000 or more, call Beyond Debt for a free consultation. Don't put it off. Life's better when you're Beyond Debt. Call 1300 871 603 now for a free consultation. Or go to beyonddebt.com.au. So Championship Day is the big blue. We've had it before. The grand final of Sydney FC, the Invincibles almost. What they've achieved has been incredible. But let's make no mistake, it counts for nothing. 
if you don't win this match. The rivalry that matters the most. Up against Melbourne Victory, who would love nothing more than to spoil Sydney's party. We've got a big blue again in the big one. And at home, we sit down and we watch the football, taking communion at the altar of the grand final. I'm excited. Yeah. You guys excited to see this thing? Yeah. This car, it's going to kill you. Let's go. I mean, this to be better than better. I got you. <laughs> that is a rare icon of America. We have a tank at our disposal. Mm -hmm. Motor Month, all month long on Discovery Turbo. What are you doing? Three ingredients, extremely simple. Two egg yolks. In demand and on the move. He'll have you cooking like a pro in no time. The new series, Neil Anthony, Private Chef, starts tonight, 8.30 on Lifestyle Food. Now, apple samosas sound a bit fancy, don't they? I suppose, really, these are apple turnovers. You know, the apple turnovers that we used to have with our mother and grandmother. Ah, you can call them samosas, you can call them turnovers, you can call them pastries, whatever you like. I don't mind, but they are delicious, and they're about the simplest dessert you will ever make in your life. Because there's nothing to it. Particularly if you've got one of these apple corers, which I love, which make life very simple. So you just put that on there. Just cut a little bit off the bottom to even it out, and then you just put that there, and away you go. So you see what I mean about it being simple? A cooking apple's what you want, because you're adding some sugar, and you want it to keep a bit of its shape, whereas an, a table apple tends to lose its shape, doesn't it? I always make tons of these, because you can reheat them, and they're beautiful. Right. Now, if you want to, this is up to you, you can cut these in half like that. I don't think you need to because these will collapse in the heat. And I don't think you need to cut them in half, but it's up to you guys. But I like this because it keeps its shape a bit. And they still, they still cook down, but they do keep this shape. 100 grams of sugar and about 100 grams of raisins or sultanas and some water and a couple of teaspoons of mixed spice. And all we then do is cook that until those apples have collapsed quite a bit and the mixture is dry. Then we cool it a little and then we'll make the pastry. You see what I mean about how simple it is? There really is nothing much to it. If you find that it's drying out before the apples are tender, or have collapsed, put a little bit more water, but I doubt whether you'll have to do that. I really do. So we'll come back in a second and we'll start thinking about putting them together. As I said, do cool them a little. All right, guys. All right, looking rather good. We've got our mixture. We just need some good puff pastry sheets. And we lift the plastic off. Always helps. I may have told you before, but I had a friend who who made one of the pastries off the show, and he rang me and he said, I didn't think much of that pastry. And I said, really? What was wrong with it? Anyway, we eventually found out that he had forgotten to take the plastic off. I can't imagine why he didn't think much of the pastry. Just some pastry cutters makes life very simple for this. As I said, you can call it a turnover or a apple pastry or, or a samosa, whatever you want. I don't mind. It's up to you. The main thing is use the best frozen pastry. Just be a bit careful. Don't overstuff it, because what happens when you overstuff it is sort of all breaks up and you end up with... And I think I may have overstuffed that one. I think that's a bit too much, isn't it? As he tells you that, he then puts too much in. So 
So I've just called that a little. You don't need to call it much, guys. Just a little. Let's see, before I keep on going, how I go with that. Now, I always say to you to keep your pastry a bit frozen. Well, I haven't with this one. And that's why I'm having a little bit of trouble with it. So I always believe that it's a lot easier to work with when it's a little frozen rather than fully thawed like this is. But that said, you'd be surprised how well it comes out. So I wouldn't worry about it. Keep in mind what I said, a lot easier to work with if it's just slightly frozen. This is sort of melting because it's such light, delicate pastry that when that happens, it just melts away. Right, some egg wash, which is just one egg and about a quarter of a cup of milk. Now this will give it a nice color. And as I said, you'll be amazed, even ones that are a bit misshapen, how well they'll come up once they rise in the oven and get a lovely colour. I am sound like I'm making excuses. <laughs> Don't worry. Once in my life, I'm telling the truth. Always tell the truth, don't I? Right, into an oven, 180 degrees. Cook it for about 10 minutes, and then you will have the most beautiful apple turnovers, stroke samosas, stroke pastries. All right. <laughs> President Bush, and I think it was Senior said this when he first was inaugurated, he said, I hate broccoli and now that I'm the President of the United States, I'm never eating broccoli again. <laughs> I don't think he'd ever had it cooked properly. That's the problem. All right, guys, see you soon.